All right, and I'm going to do um, the um, you know Wizard of Oz version in you know five 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 to ten minutes, um, so that uh, there'll be an opportunity for everybody to ask questions. Uh, my name is Faye Dixon. Uh, I've been um, a clinical psychologist. Um, and clinical researcher for about uh, 20 years. However, today was my fourth day at the Mind Institute. Um, and um, so I am going to be doing actually a slightly different um, presentation, um, which is good because there are lots of students here, whereas I'm really going to be giving you kind of the more didactic model of ADHD and really telling you kind of what it is. And you guys are going to be taking mad and furious notes. And then just very briefly talk about um, the research project that I came here um, uh, to join uh, at the Mind Institute. Okay, what is ADHD? It's a neurological condition that involves problems with inattention and hyperactivity and impulsivity. And the, we're talking about um, uh, acti levels of activity and inattention that are developmentally inconsistent with the age of the child. Um, however, it's really less about attention and it's more about the developmental failure of the brain circuitry, the wiring that helps to monitor inhibition and self-control. So it's really this loss of self um, of uh, self-regulation that compromises the brain functions that are crucial um, to attention and behavioral control. Okay. Um, this is kind of the historical timeline because I know people talk about. It. Um, ADD, ADHD, there have been a number of different names for this condition, you know, over time beginning at the, you know, beginning of the, the last century, you know, up to the current. But uh, the current um, diagnostic um, disorder is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and I'll explain in the next slides kind of why sometimes you get some different names, okay? Um, the core symptoms are inattention. Um, and hyperactivity and impulsivity. Um, so it's those inattention, inattentive symptoms where people will sometimes say, oh, this person suffers from ADD. That was kind of the old name. And they're frequently talking um, about um, a child or an adult who has a lot of the inattentive symptoms, whereas um, the hyperactive and impulsive symptoms are um, what we think of uh, what people think of when they think of ADHD, but it is this entire um, core symptom area that uh, represent uh, the disorder. Um, some of the inattentive symptoms, and I'll just go through them um, quickly, you know, of, of uh, inattention, you know, it's having difficulty paying attention to detail, um, having difficulty following through or finishing tasks, difficulty with organizing, uh, having a hard time and not liking so much things that require you to kind of be focused and persevere in activities, um, you know, forgetting things. And then the hyperactive and impulsive uh, cluster are, I think, what people think of more in terms of, you know, kind of having, you know, um, the wiggles and um, having trouble kind of uh, motorically, you know, maintaining focus sort of seeming as though a child or an adolescent or an adult is kind of more on the go, um, you know, talking excessively, having difficulty uh, in, you know, inhibiting um, impulses. Um, but the things, the slides that I just showed, you know, are sort of the symptoms um, and sort of the kind of more overall, kind of overarching uh, difficulty are what we think of um, as deficits um, in executive functioning. And so what I, rather than going through all those, <laughs> what I want to, you to think about, it's really having difficulty with organization, with planning, following through, and especially using cues in the environment to shape and change your behavior. So it's kind of like not making the same mistake over again. It's having an experience, um, you know, having a um, consequence, good or bad, from that experience, using that information to then plan your future behavior. So it's that kind of executive 
um, function impairment that is really the hallmark of ADHD. And so the other pieces are, you know, the symptoms in terms of what parents or teachers may actually see in their home or in, um, in a classroom. In terms of the demographics of ADHD, we're talking primarily about three to five percent of uh, school-aged children. Um, the ratio of males to females it, it varies widely depending upon um, the, the research um, uh, studies that have been done. Although we really know that uh, the ratio of males to females are um, closer uh, in terms of being more equal, um, uh, males and females are equally um, affected. However, their presentation is different. And there are symptoms that may emerge earlier in boys, and there may be different types of symptoms that emerge for girls, which is why there's this difference in thinking, oh, perhaps it happens more in boys or less in girls. But the rates are actually um, much more similar than previously thought. Um, the higher number of uh, males may be due to who gets referred first. Um, and girls typically are diagnosed at a later age, may have more inattentive type symptoms and less hyperactive or impulsive symptoms. Um, and there is a strong link between um, having ADHD symptoms and also having you know, school difficulties or having anxiety or mood symptoms or also having um, conduct or behavior problems. Not all of those occur with ADHD, but those are certainly conditions that can coexist. Um, and in terms of like the course of the disorder, and I, I feel like I'm talking too much to people here, but I'm trying to, trying to see the slide. Um, over um, time, what you see is that the difficulty with kind of in, uh, with inattention and remaining focused that stays about the same during the course of um, the disorder. However, impulsivity and hyperactivity decreases uh, with age. That is, as you get older, um, there is a greater likelihood that the hyperactive and impulsive symptoms will begin to. Uh, begin to drop out or not be as prominent, whereas the inattentive uh, symptoms uh, tend to continue over time. Um, so that you can see that in terms of um, outcome, there are about 30% of you know, children as they grow into um, adolescence and adulthood who, the term I like to use is that they manage the disorder. They, they get good treatment. Um, there are a number of factors that actually help them to function extremely well going into adulthood, but it's what people in the past have said, oh, they kind of outgrow it. And it's not so much an idea of outgrowing um, the, um, the disorder as much as managing it really effectively and getting really good treatment. Um, but about 40% of children and adolescents will <coughs> have continued um, challenges of varying degrees, and then there is about 30% of uh, children or adolescents who, as they go into um, adulthood, may actually have some increase in difficulties, some of them being issues with alcohol or substance abuse, uh, relationship difficulties, employment. 